Okay, I think we can start. Welcome to everyone. This one is the fourth uh, um, a cup of tea talk. And this, uh, this talk is a series of uh, um, lectures organized by the TU Dublin Conservatory Guitar Class in collaboration with the Festival Corde d'Autunno and the Dublin Guitar Symposium. So we are dedicating this series of talk to, um, to the repertoire and we are inviting a renowned guitarist and researcher to um, that, that deepen uh, themselves in the knowledge of a specific repertoire. But we want to see these events as also uh, an occasion for us to create a community where we can discuss and talk about the repertoire. I'm Marco Ramelli, I'm a guitar teacher at the UW Conservatory. And I'm here with uh, Owen Flood, and that is a teacher at Menuth University. And together we organized last year the Dublin Guitar Symposium. As always, uh, I really hope that uh, you and your family are safe. Thanks very much, Marco. And I'd just like to say uh, thank you again, obviously, to have en uh, Enrica presenting for us today. And just a quick introduction to Enrica. Um, Enrico Savini is an Italian guitarist specializing in 19th century guitar repertoire and techniques on original instruments. She started her studies uh, at the Erigo Boito uh, Conservatory in Parma, studying classical guitar with Maestro Walter Pizzali and clarinet with Maestro Roberto Salzini. Sorry for my pronunciation of all these things. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. From 2011 to 2015, she collaborated uh, with Teatro Reggio di Parma, or of Parma, with which she participated in the opera performances of the works The Barber of Seville, Falstaff, Rigoletto, and Nabucco. In September 2013, she graduated from the Civic Academy of Milan with Gio Macari Pugliesi in 19th century guitar, an instrument she is currently dedicated to and with which she's had a lot of concert activity of late. She plays in duo with Laura Savini, who plays romantic guitar and photo piano, with whom she's had several concerts in Italy and abroad. They studied chamber music at the Duino Academy with uh, Trio de Parma. In January 2019, their first album was published in download format on the famous music magazine Amadeus. From September 2019, she's been studying early music and 19th century repertoire in the early music department of Koninklijk Conservatory of Brussels with Maestro Xavier Diaz La Torre. In 2017, she started together with Gabriella Lodi and Marco Romelli here today, the Touchstone Sound Project, or Touch the Sound Project, an organization that deals with the creation of conferences, masterclasses, um, conferences, exhibitions of historical instruments with the aim of helping students and musicians to develop an informed approach to the repertoire and the use of historical instruments. And now we'll pass things over to Enrique, who'll do her talk. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being uh, here with me. Uh, thanks to Owen and Marco for the invitation. Uh, thank you for organizing the, these nice moments in this uh, strange period. I'm very happy to be here and give my small contribution to the series of, concert, of conferences and to share with you something about 19th century guitar world. I am a, gla a classical guitarist and for several years I've been studying the repertoire of the 19th century period, approaching uh, original instruments with the use of gut strings and fingertips uh, technique. This presentation is uh, divided into three parts. A first part dedicated to the vision and analysis of 19th century instruments mentioned in uh, Fernando Sor's method. A second part dedicated to techniques uh, used by Sor compared with some techniques of the French school of 1800. And for this section, I consulted a thesis written by Pascal Valois. A third part dedicated to orchestration, one of the most important aspects for the approach to 19th century music in general, and in particular for approaching the music written by Sor. Um, these three points are closely related to each other if we talk about the sound and the idea of sound. It makes sense to talk in a connected way about these three elements because technique is influenced by the instrument and by the strings and writing and composing is influenced by the technique and by the instrument. The last part suggests suggestions 
is a little list of ideas regarding what to listen to and what to read that I will be happy to share with you. Guitar makers. During his life, uh, Saur traveled a lot with the possibility of coming into contact with different schools and realities of guitar making. He spent uh, the first 35 years in Spain, then he moved to Paris, London, St. Petersburg, and then he returned to Paris until the end of his days. Here is a list of uh, the guitar maker mentioned in his method. As you can see, there are a lot of Spanish makers from different places like Madrid, Cadiz and Malaga. A French maker, Lacotte, uh, Panormo from London and Schroeder from Russia. Sor had uh, a very broad experience and very clear ideas regarding the type of instrument he found most suitable or right for performing his music. Here we have some pictures of 19th century guitars from the Santa Cecilia Hall collection in Edinburgh. In the front, uh, a Spanish guitar, this is a Pagues, 1813. The second one is a Panormo, uh, 1840, an Italian maker who lived in London. And the first one is Lacotte, 1830. These three guitars are mentioned in source method. On the other side, uh, we have Fabricatore, uh, 1822, and Napolitan Luthier, and uh, Stauffer from Vienna, uh, 1829. Um, this one on the right is another example of uh, Pagues with uh, single strings. The singular headstock uh, shows how a double strings guitar was adapted to six single strings by cutting part of the headstock. These are very different instruments, different in size and shape of the soundboard, different fingerboard. If you had the possibility to try them, uh, you can really touch and play with different feelings, different bridges, headstock, sometimes with mechanics or sometimes with pegs. This is a kind of a mirror uh, of a lot of variety and experimentations. Lacotte. Uh, the French maker, uh, Saur spent uh, a lot of words for uh, Lacotte in his method. Here uh, he says that uh, if he wanted to buy an instrument, uh, he would buy it from Lacotte because of uh, his quality of not uh, being inflexible uh, to reasoning and because of uh, his uh, good personal taste. I will now compare uh, two French instruments to see the common characteristics. On the left, uh, de la Cotte and on the right, uh, a petit Jean from Mirkur. Mirkur was uh, one of the most productive and important center for the guitar making in France uh, in 19th century period. You can find some physical characteristics in common, like the bridge or the keyboard that, uh, as you can see, hands, uh, ends directly uh, on the top. In general, uh, I summarized uh, here the characteristics of uh, the French uh, uh, guitars. So a smaller body than uh, modern guitars. Uh, the fingerboard is slim and thin. Fingerboard uh, is directly on the top and uh, we have a lower bridge, that means uh, a lower action. Pascal Valois um, analyzed in his research the effects on posture in relation to the physical characteristics of these French instruments. Posture is an element that is often discussed in methods and in the drawing uh, we can see what we can consider normal position of the French tradition, explained in this way. Three key points to have the instrument fixed, uh, the right leg to stop the body of the instrument, the left hand to support the fingerboard between index and thumb, and the little finger of the right hand on the top, to help holding the instrument in position. In addition, uh, the use of a footstool uh, to raise the left leg uh, seems to have only a secondary role in the support of the guitar. The left leg is not the main point of stability uh, for the instrument. I report below only one example from Pascal analysis um, on the technique in relation to the instrument. The example in question concerns the left hand and the extensions exercises from Ledoux method. 
where you can see an extension of uh, six frets. It is not possible to play on a modern guitar this passage in a comfortable way, but it seems like something uh, possible to do with a French instrument from that period. I have instead reported an example by Sor that uh, seemed to me useful from study 16 or study 8 of the Segovia collection, in which the stretching of five frets uh, with the addition of C in my opinion, uh, is in my opinion similar in terms of uh, effort. Sor, uh, with the drawing in the slide taken from his method, represented the French posture with uh, all the things that he considered as bad habits. He says, um, as first, I said to myself that this position could only be compared to that of a pianist sitting at one end of the keyboard. He expressed the perplexity about the position uh, of the shoulders of the left thumb, that, the, that was a technique largely in use by French and Italians, but uh, not allowed by source technique. And finally, he was not sure about the unfixed position. Sor uh, proposed a different solution starting from observing pianist. His proposal is a table. So, as a pianist uh, sit in the middle of the keyboard, the same should happen to a guitar player. The 12th fret, uh, the middle point of the guitar, needs to be in front of the body. And as you can see, we have two points of contact, point B on the right leg and point D on the table. In this way, um, the positive aspects are that the left hand is free to move without any involvement in sustaining the instrument, and that the guitar is supported by the knee, the table, and is fixed by weight of the right arm. This is a quite unique solution at the time, uh, comparable to another proposal by another Spanish guitarist, often mentioned in source method, despite having had really distant te techniques, and uh, he is Dionis Aguado, and these two drawings uh, uh, from the Aguado's method uh, shows in the first um, uh, method on the left, he proposes the guitar resting on the chair, a position that in the second method on the right, he maintains through the invention of the tripod, an instrument or object that uh, allows the guitar to support itself uh, independently useful for the guitarist to have a completely free body and arms. Reflecting on the position is crucial, uh, crucial because it also contributes to, to, to determine the quality of sound and uh, it affects the way how we produce the sound. I will now focus on some uh, right hand techniques as exposed by SOAR. PIM. I therefore establish as a rule of my fingering to employ commonly only the three fingers touched by the line AB and to use the fourth only for playing a chord in four parts. Sor uh, reaches this conclusion by reflecting not only on the physical aspects of the end, but also considering how the sound is produced in another instrument. He compares a guitar with an harpsichord and he says that as the strings of an harpsichord are plucked by hammers placed on a plane whose parallel to the strings, so also for the guitar. So for sure, the fourth uh, finger is outside line AB that should be parallel to the strings. The use of the ring finger, the fourth finger, creates for him an unnatural movement that compromises the stability of the hand and the resulting sound. That's the reason why he decided to employ only three fingers. PI uh, on staccato, on fast staccato notes. Sor uh, divided the hand into parts, thumb and index that can be moved without involving other fingers and the other three fingers that are strongly connected to each other. So for the fast passages, he proposes the use of thumb and index. You can see an example of a, a study to which he refers, where the four notes are played alternatively with the thumb and uh, index. Now we have uh, um, 
the little finger of the right hand on the soundboard. Here is what Pascal wrote about the little finger in French technique. He says uh, it is a practice that arrives as such from the position of the lute and the baroque guitar. The comparison of a good numbers of methods shows that only four of these methods say no to the little finger on the soundboard. It seems it was an, an active practice in France uh, until around 1830. And the advantages are a stability of the right hand and for the unsure position of the instrument together with the uh, right arm. Here is uh, what Sor says about the little finger. Uh, I summarize and he says that he used it but with some exceptions. He underlines that it can be helpful but not as a constant practice. In a research um, I did uh, a few months ago, I analyzed the, the methods of uh, these 11 guitarists. I tried to answer two frequent questions about the technique. And this is, in summary, the result of the question, who uses the little finger on the top? Only Aguado and Mertz say no, and some do not express themselves, while the majority use the little finger on the top. Let's just read the first sentence of Sor's thought about Nays. He says, never in my life I heard a guitarist whose playing was supportable if he played with the Nays. It is clear that Sor did not have sympathy for Nays. Uh, from Valois' thesis, an essential and well-organized collection of French methods, we can see that the French and Italian school traditionally used the fingertip, no Nays, like Carulli, Carcassi, and Merchi, while the Spanish tradition, like Abreu, Aguado, and Moretti, traditionally with the nails. We can do a consideration about the connection between the use of nails and the type of instrument. In French and Italian instruments, we saw previously that the fingerboard is directly on the, on the soundboard, on the top, so there's a lower bridge, and so we have the strings closer to the top making it difficult to play with nails without touching the table. Now about uh, gut strings, I would like to talk, you, uh, to talk about my direct experience. I started uh, using uh, gut some years ago after meeting uh, guitar duo Macri Pugliese. In my case, this uh, required the absence of nails. It was a gradual process. Um, in studying and approaching this material, I felt the need to shorten the nail up to the use of fingertip completely. The, the material creates a lot of friction because it's not smooth, smooth at all. And with my type of nail, I had no pleasure in playing it. And after a while, playing with the fingertip, the creation of the callus creates a present sound. So, it was a transition from nail to flesh, uh, a radical change in the creation of the sound. With, um, yes, with Mimo Peruffo of Aquila Corde and the Italian luthier uh, Gabriele Lodi, we collaborated in uh, testing a new gut string developed by Mimo on an historical instrument. I would like to mention also a wonderful thing that uh, Mimo is doing at the moment. He converted all the machineries that he uses to make strings uh, in order to produce the specific material required uh, by hospitals for ventilator uh, machines. It's a material that was not uh, produced in Italy and uh, he is doing this for free. So just uh, wanted to let you know this great thing that uh, Mimo is doing. So uh, Mimo, that is in addition being a string maker, is also a passionate researcher did an excellent work making strings according to the techniques and material of the time. To develop his way to make strings, he also deeply observed uh, rare original strings. And we have produced a work looking for the type of sound and the resistance of the material. Now uh, you can listen a short uh, extract from a video that we made. In the video, I am using uh, an original Lacotte with the first prototype of this new gut created accordingly with the recent discovery uh, of Mimo. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this, uh, um, this is one of the videos that uh, we created with the project, uh, uh, Touch the Sound, uh, that uh, as Owen said, uh, that includes masterclass events and research, especially research, um, where with the collaboration of experts and collectors, luthiers, uh, we uh, dip in uh, some aspects of the guitar, mainly involving historical instruments. Now, the last point is uh, orchestration intended as an element of composition and writing and uh, an element of sound imagination and uh, imitation. This is an important aspect in Sor's approach uh, on the guitar. Uh, we can connect it first to his musical education. Main part of uh, his education comes from a, a monastery of Montserrat from the age of 10. Uh, a place where he studied sacred music and the associated styles of composition. On the other hand, before Montserrat, there is uh, his participation with the father in Italian operas and the first autodidact study of singing, violin and guitar. This uh, indicates uh, a broad musical experience and as a result, uh, in his method for the guitar, we see an interest on sound and orchestration with a large part dedicated to the production of the sound, the imitation, and the arpeggios in a non-technical sense. In, um, in the list, I included uh, composition that do not involve the guitar to understand uh, Fernando's musical skills and musical experiences, not only as a guitarist. We have, uh, okay, seguidillas for guitar, but as well for piano music for solo piano, three string quartets, two symphonies, violin concerto, ballets, nine ballets, sacred vocal music, three operas, and one cantata for solo, cholos, and string and wind. He says that uh, the imitation of some instruments is never the exclusive effect of the quality of the sound. It is necessary that the passage should be arranged as it would be in score for the instruments I would imitate. Which instruments? These are uh, instruments that are mentioned in the method where SAR provided example of the way of writing each instrument and its characteristics. The trumpet, for example, uh, moves on harmonic sounds and arpeggios or on fast triplets as a percussion instrument. Arp, for example, uh, with very large extensions of arpeggios and with light and fast character. And now I would like to show uh, you a couple of instruments in detail. For each instrument, we see how it is written and then how to perform it in a practical sense. About oboe, he says that uh, it would be impossible to imitate a singing passage 
and I've never thought of venturing on any others than short passages in thirds. And now, in a practical sense, to do obo, has the haute voix as a quite nasal sound. I not only touch the string as near as possible to the bridge, but I curve my fingers and use the little nail I possess. And this is the only case in which I use the nail without inconvenience. About the uh, horn, uh, the examples, this is a typical phrase uh, and structure for horns with a movement of two voices in third, fifth, and sixth. And uh, in a practical sense, uh, source says that uh, I should avoid producing a silvery and tinkling sound. And I take no note with the left hand on the string to which it first belongs, but the following string contiguous to it. That means that uh, in uh, the example number eight, uh, the, the C, we will play it on the third, yes, the third string and the E on the second string. About batteries, all those bar variation of chords called Alberti basis or batteries, if they represent nothing but themselves, have always appeared to me to produce the effect of a continued rolling insupportably monotonous. Here is a, an example of a string quartet and how Sora reduced it for guitar. It is interesting to think that the arpeggios in source music are not a mechanism of the right hand, but they want to represent a certain orchestral passage and organic. In the method, the arpeggio section is very small with very few exercises. And he explains he is not interested like other colleagues of him in arpeggios in a technical sense, but rather to the meaning and what that arpeggio represents. Another example, um, here the guitar in this case manages to reproduce everything that the, stri the string trio does. And so not only required to write for the guitar similarly to the writing for the orchestra, but he suggests that the only acceptable performance is the one where the performer has clearly in mind the sound of the instrument that the composer wants to represent. I mean that he must think of the score as a painter thinks of the object that he would represent, supposing him to know how the painter also to consider the subject. Otherwise, he might paint a very correct figure and make at the same time a very bad portrait. To conclude, uh, I would like to leave to you my suggestions about something to listen and read or study. I suggest uh, Duo Macarian Pugliese recording about Sor and Coste uh, duo works, and especially 54 bis and Souvenir. About what to play, uh, some study from uh, Opus 60. This is a really good way to approach uh, then the bigger composition and as well the Opus 5. And something to read, there is a very nice uh, website, fernandosor.es, uh, a Spanish website, full of uh, information about SOR, and especially, um, it's really interesting, the bibliography, where you can find a lot of articles and uh, thesis. And uh, uh, of course, the Pascal Valois thesis uh, that I mentioned in my presentation, and that you can find freely on uh, internet, in internet. And to finish uh, this book, uh, that is uh, the Brian Jeffrey, uh, Fernando Sor, composer and guitarist, that is a, a really amazing book uh, published by Tecla. And uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Erika, for the beautiful lecture. Okay, also Owen is here with us. So maybe we can open uh, to questions. Let's see if. Uh... Okay, Kian, you can do the first one. So I have to unmute you, but I have to find you.
Okay. Hi, Enrica. Uh, thanks so much for your lecture. It was really, really interesting. Thank you. I was just, uh, wondering, I noticed uh, in your video that you seem to be in a kind of small room. And I was wondering what kind of space do you think is the most ideal for those guitars and maybe compared to a modern and classical guitar? Okay, so um, yes, um, for the intimate situation for this kind of instrument, I think is the best thing. But uh, I think as well for the classical guitar. So, but uh, uh, especially for this uh, this instrument, yes, I think the small situation like the um, the um, I don't know the name in English, but the salot, uh, the, um, the living room uh, of the 19th century. I think it's really the the, the best situation where to play this kind of instrument, to really listen uh, all the variation of the sound and the touching of the budello. It's a, a really nice experience uh, that I think the small place is uh, the best way to feel it. Okay, cool, thanks. Maybe Erika, you can talk about a little bit about the experience with the forte piano because uh, you are playing with your sister, Laura. I think that is here with us. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Because <clears throat> I think it's connected with the idea of projection. <clears throat> yes, um, yes, with the fortepiano we have, um, okay, I have this experience because of my sister, uh, because she's a pianist and uh, she also degreed in um, fortepiano, so in the 19th century um, period. And um, it is really particular because uh, at the first uh, we thought that it was uh, really difficult for the guitar to play in a um, in a relaxed way without no forcing the sounds and uh, these kind of things. But then we, I, I usually play stand when I play with my sister and I can see that uh, the projection, the projection of the sound is uh, really good in the sense. And it is like uh, the forte piano helps to, uh, to go for the sound. We have, we have never problem with uh, um, with the guitar or uh, with uh, or somebody that say that the guitar was too soft for this um, uh, yes for uh, not too much competitive for with the piano but uh, this is not the case I think it's really difficult than uh, the modern situation with guitar and uh, piano and pianoforte but uh, I had the experience uh, maybe 10 years ago about that and uh, yes so and also playing in a stand uh, position I think it helps a lot for the projection of the sound. Uh, um, of course, playing with my sister, this is, uh, it is really helpful. Sometimes also alone, it's something that I like to do. It seems to me like uh, the sound can uh, go uh, more far than uh, usually. Oh, cool, thank you so much. And the next one is uh, Luca. Hi. Uh, Hi. How are you? Uh, congratulations for your presentation. It was really, really fantastic for condensing everything, all the knowledge about SOAR. Uh, so, hey, uh, so um, I mean, it was interesting to what you said about the, um, the use of just three fingers. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I went through some uh, treaties uh, of previous composer. Uh, that uh, uh, were working in, uh, in France before uh, before SOAR, uh, and uh, it, it's really interesting because they they use as well just three uh, fingers. But um, I mean, the, you, you say that uh, just the, the little finger uh, it, it lays uh, on on the guitar, uh, but uh, it is in, it is really interesting that. Um, between the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century, uh, like Merki, that was uh, quite famous, it used to, to, to use just three fingers as well. But uh, the, the nice thing was that in, in his treatise, he uh, doesn't say to, to put uh, the, the little finger uh, on, on the guitar, but the fourth finger. So uh, my question is uh, because I mean we know a little bit this this kind of subject. What, what do you think about this change uh, of technique? Because they just use three fingers as well. But um, I mean, Merki, for instance, proposes to 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 put the the fourth finger 
uh, on yeah. the guitar. And, he's and you mean uh, what, what I think about uh, the passage of uh, the four uh, or the fifth yeah, exactly. finger on the table? I mean, it, it just, it's not a real question. It's just what you think about okay. the, this change, because to me, putting the, the fourth finger uh, on the guitar limits a lot the, the possibility of, of using the, the, the instrument. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, thank you, question. Luca. Yes, and you, you know a lot of things about uh, Merki and uh, this period. And um, yes, uh, um, you are right. It's really difficult, I think, with the fourth finger. But I agree, and I thought the same when, uh, uh, for example, I, yes, not uh, um, previous uh, uh, treaties, but uh, when I read the, the um, uh, method of uh, Legnani, he says as, as well that uh, his uh, right hand position is so strange, and I try to do that, and for me, it's not. Uh, too much comfortable and he says as well to uh, put the little finger uh, and not before the bridge but on the other side if this is the bridge in this part and to have the four uh, no sorry uh, on the on the bridge and to have the fourth finger so the the, the ring finger on the top so it's like uh, um, I think uh, of course the use of the little finger is to have this kind of um, uh, weight uh, because it gives a, um, a, a solution of the uh, relaxing of the hand sometimes uh, uh, when I try and uh, you can really feel uh, the weight that goes uh, out from the other fingers and um, is really useful but with the fourth, fourth uh, finger I agree that uh, for me it's really something uh, hard but uh, it, it seems it was something really used too with the fourth I don't know in the uh, 18, um, 18th century how it worked, but uh, as you said, maybe it was really useful tool and uh, used. So, yes, I think the little finger is something really interesting to try and to also for the classical guitarist to, uh, to try the feeling of uh, playing with the little finger on the top, just to feel uh, how it could be for them to to play and yes, perform with this uh, right hand position. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Luca. <laughs> okay, oh, um, please read also the chat that there are very nice uh, information by Jan and <clears throat> also Nan, but we have a question from Carlos first. So Carlos, you can make your two questions. John Rick, I, want, I wanted to, to Hi, Carlos. ask you a couple of uh, questions. Uh, first, uh, if it is possible to get these uh, same effects of other instruments, um, uh, Sor is here explaining in, in his uh, method, with modern guitar strings are, and with uh, nails, like normal, uh, normal guitar, Maybe it's not as um, fine and not as, as um, very beautiful color and with the cut strings. And, and I don't know if you already tried in a normal guitar and, and if you find any difference that with the, 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 the first. Yes. OK. Um, yes. Um, I think it is possible because it's something that comes from the ideas and the desire to uh, add something uh, and uh, the imagination to create something on the instrument. So it is possible. Of course, the difference uh, be between uh, the gut and the nylon or the carbon is uh, really big. There is a lot of difference. And uh, but that doesn't mean that the gut is better than the nylon. Uh, that means that uh, in, my, in my experience, uh, um, it makes sense to do this kind of music with the gut and to try to do this kind of effects with the, with the gut. And, um, but uh, I think, uh, yes, why not on the, on the classical guitar and on the, on the nylon too. I think I've never, but I never tried to do that. But uh, yes, I think with, uh, as they had a lot of imagination and uh, they really wanted to do something uh, uh, with fantasy and uh, yes, in this way, why not on the classical and on the nylon too, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. And uh, the second question would be uh, about these uh, um, Peru strings that you uh, mentioned. Yeah. Uh, is also um, needed to do it without nails or, or is a material that also works with nails? 
because it uh, would be nice to, to, to find one material that maybe get uh, this kind of, of uh, gut sound, but uh, still making uh, possible to, to play with the, with the nails because as you mentioned, different uh, treatises uh, in that uh, period used with and without nails. So uh, yes. it's not possible in this time to play with nails or without nails. So, sure, uh, sure. What uh, is is possible with these um, um, strings you developed? Okay, with this particular string, I think uh, honestly no, but because uh, it is uh, um, there's uh, um, how to say it's really really hard. It's uh, I think uh, this kind of uh, gut was the most uh, uh, hard, uh, the hardest uh, budel uh, gut I've ever tried. Yes, this yes, but uh, there are other gut. Uh, other kind of gut that are really uh, suitable for uh, nails um, guitarists <laughs> yes uh, of course but this this in specific i think uh, but i have no name so i cannot do that i cannot say at all uh, this thing but uh, in my experience on that way with this uh, gut i really felt uh, that was uh, quite hard for me too because uh, there was really a lot of friction but uh, why not to try? <laughs> but other gut, uh, yes, as you said, a lot of guitar players uh, of the 19th century played with the nays and as well uh, luthiers and uh, baroque guitar player, I guess, I, I'm not sure, but uh, so it is possible to play with nays. It's up to the uh, aesthetic, I think, and to the, the hand too, and to the sensibility of the, the, of the player. Grazie mille. Grazie Carlos. Yes, as also the other Carlos said that uh, yes. we have also... Hi, Carlos. Hi, Carlos. Hi. you're here. <laughs> hey, Mark. Uh, yes, uh, I, I just wanted to expand on that uh, answer. Hi, Enrica. And, Hi. Uh, uh, they, I, I also played on a replica, a 19th century guitar. And, uh, and I used a uh, by nylon. Uh, okay. Uh, La Bella and Aquila, they are some of the makers. Uh, and, and in my experience, well, they sound just like the regular guitar with regular strings. So I don't really see that much difference of the effect. Unless, of course, that you uh, let them stay on the guitar for a longer time and this, the same effect of being very old strings gives you a more um, a, a singing uh, quality to, to, to the music. So that, And that have you ever tried the data too? Um, no, I haven't. No. It's very difficult to find uh, in this place of the oh. world. Sorry about that. But I, but I will try. That, that definitely I will try. I, I, I really uh, need to to play with, with that and see the real difference. Could be an experience. Thank you. Okay, no, that's just my two cents. <laughs> Great. Uh, congratulations on your, uh, your lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you so much. The next one is Paco. So, hi, Enrica. Hi, uh, Paco. Good very good to see you it's a long time um uh, great lecture i like it very much it's in the morning right now so sorry for all the um, messiness but uh one question uh, you said a lot about uh, or you had experience uh previous experience in playing in in opera and clarinet uh, chamber music with your sister and my question is uh how much does playing with another instrument that is in guitar influence this um, this imagination of playing the guitar as an orchestra. We, we've heard a lot that Sor is a specialist in this, but how much is uh, the, ex the experience, your experience of playing with other instrumentalists uh, influence your imagination? Okay, that's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> and that's a, it was a difficult question because, uh, okay, I think, um, that uh, the fact that I play clarinet, uh, of course, should have some uh, um, some effects on my um, playing. Um, but uh, I think that sometimes, uh, yes, in imagination it could help because you can think about uh, uh, some practical things that if you don't play another instrument, maybe you don't know. So like uh, the fast note, how, how fast, so how is the staccato note? Uh, uh, how, which are the possibilities that you can 
have uh, with the different staccato. So these things is good to know. Um, and yes, uh, playing it, uh, maybe it's easier to know this kind of uh, knowledge. Uh, but uh, at the same time, um, I think that sometimes playing the guitar um, doesn't help me to remember this kind of stuff. So it's, uh, yes, it's always a kind of, um, I think a fight to remember this kind of things and not uh, um, be um, a slave of the guitar sound because uh, the gut string too has a wonderful sound. Every guitar has a wonderful sound. And so you, I, I I'm talking about me, sometimes I, beca I become um, a slave of my same sound. So this, uh, has to be a really a good exercise to try to remember all the the knowledge that you have but on, not only playing but also listening so yes i play with my sister or i played in the orchestra but as everybody i think can listen the operas on or listen the symphonies this can be really a big uh, um, a big luggage a big thing to have when you go to play 19th century music for guitar because it's, uh, it is the, the main thing, the orchestral stuff, but also in listening, not only in being there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Paco. The next is Austin. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hi, Austin. Hi, thanks very much for the lecture. It was a great insight into source life. I just have a question about um, source technique. Do you think his technique and um, guitar position is more beneficial when playing 19th century um, on a classical guitar or should we like maybe use the more modern techniques? Like I've seen in the photo, his headstock was a bit lower than say at eye level and the use of the A finger. Okay, sorry, can you repeat the first part because the connection, I couldn't hear the first part uh, of the question. Yeah, no problem. I was just wondering, do you think source technique Ah. <laughs> technique and guitar position is more beneficial when playing 19th century. Sorry, is, okay. the, is the connection bad? I think I have. Um, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, for the fact. Okay. I'll, I'll... Can you listen to me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so you are uh, wondering if uh, um, the technique uh, uh, on the on this kind of instrument uh, thought by Sor is better or is possible to do it also in uh, modern guitar, right? Yes. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Yes, I think uh, some of them, of course, there are some uh, physical aspects that are, um, I think, not possible at all to do on a modern uh, guitar, but uh, in, we, in some way, I think they can be uh, translated. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know, some, uh, right hand uh, uh, techniques uh, or some, uh, for example, the PI or, or also a technique that uh, Valois uh, uh, said uh, in his thesis about right hand to play more uh, strings with uh, only one finger um, that uh, he says is possible to do because you have uh, the strings that are closer. So you, you don't have to do so much uh, effort, you, yes, effort to do um, a lot of, uh, street, sorry, a lot of street uh, um, like in a modern guitar. So there are, I think, some kind of uh, uh, technical things that maybe are not useful and it's better to do in a, in a, tech, in a modern technical sense. But it uh, could be interesting to try to do on a modern guitar and try to understand which of these are more useful or less useful. And then in the second case, uh, translate uh, this kind of, uh, try to understand the, the real um, um, intention and the real idea, not the real, we don't know the real ideas, but uh, maybe what we think it's uh, the basic intention and the first ideas uh, and try to reproduce it. So, but some, some techniques are possible. So yes, read this uh, method that could be really helpful in a, a lot of sense. Mm. Thank you, Austin. Okay. Yeah, thanks very much. Let's see if we have other questions. Okay, let's mention what uh, Jan said before, that uh, the violin concerto in G, he discovered that it's not uh, original by Saul, but by Joseph Boulange, Chevalier de Saint-Georges. 
And okay, that is a very nice discovery. And let's see if we have uh, other questions. I think that the one, one thing that really, that is really fascinating is the idea of saw that uh, the imagination is uh, in some way more important than the realization. When, uh, when we're saying that uh, if a performer is playing correctly the passage without having in mind the sound, is not giving uh, you know, the right portrait of the, of the piece. And that is quite, quite nice and is, uh, I think it is also a way to connect uh, uh, us maybe with a normal guitar to his music, eh? to use the imagination to try to have in mind the, mm. the, the orchestration. The orchestration. Yes. yes. Yes, and also the fact I think uh, that uh, it makes you, um, when you think about that and you think that you should have that, uh, you feel like, uh, um, you feel that you always have to be honest to yourself that you are really uh, conscious about the thing that you are doing or conscious about the thing that you would do it. Uh, yes, that you would like to do. So that's a really interesting aspect. So, yeah. We have a question from Enda. Okay, you have to unmute you. No, okay. You can do it. Hi. No, I cannot hear you, Enda. No. No. <laughs> can, you, <laughs> can you mime it? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, can you write it down in the chat? Uh, actually, while you write that, Enrique, could, uh, can you talk a little more about the, the table technique that you discussed at the start of the lecture? Yes. Uh, did that, did that, um, was that influential or was that just a, a sort of a single idea that, that never really went anywhere? Or was there, did that idea influence other players at the time? Because that's, that's one of the first times I've seen that. Uh, description of how to play guitar and especially then the tripod as well did these things were they just a flash in the pan or or did they have a wider influence okay um yes it's a quite strange position and mm. uh, uh, i think it's not too far from the position of uh, aguado or the intention of uh, aguado <coughs> and uh, this kind of position um the one of aguado uh, had in in this period uh, some french uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, guitarists that uh, would like to do it uh, as well. So uh, it was not only one uh, person that uh, thought that this was uh, uh, a good way to play, but uh, okay, I don't know how many, but it has some yeah. uh, yes, uh, fun of this position. And um, yes, I'm not sure at all now um, uh, too about the stability of the position uh, suggested by Sor. Uh, uh, yes, I've tried to to do it, uh, but uh, okay, for me it's not so. Um, I'm certainly going to try after this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Just, uh, let me know what you think then. Yes, it's uh, it's it's funny to to try yeah. it, and but okay, I'm not uh, sure at all to his position mm. too about the the stability and uh, yes, of course uh, it's a good. Uh, thing for the for the left uh, hand because he was not uh, um, okay with the thumb and uh, a lot of um, guitarists in that period used the thumb and it was also a way as we see we saw to to raise the guitar uh, so for the left it was really good but uh, uh, for the right hand at the same time it seems uh, for me in the idea that you have not so much possibility to uh, change mm. the position as you would like to you to do because he suggested that you can do a lot of uh, different sounds but if the harm is a good point for the fixed position then if you have to move uh, it becomes uh, a bit uh, yes uncomfortable and unsure so yeah yeah i think this was the thanks. Uh, i hope this was the okay <laughs> the question yeah that was it yeah. <laughs> okay. thanks carlos is asking you to show to show you to show us uh, your right hand nails that you don't okay. have. <laughs> I have nails, but not not in that sense. Okay, no, okay, but 
Yes, this is the case. So, uh, non ACE, and it depends also a lot, but uh, yes, this is something really clear also for the nails, uh, um, also for who use the nails, that it depends from the, um, the kind of fingers that you have, I think. So, I have just a little, little nail that uh, helps me to have um, a kind of uh, body uh, that goes uh, against the flesh. So it, um, it helps me to have a more, a more, uh, a, a more uh, how to say, uh, present sound, a more, uh, yes, a sure sound, a sure sound, <coughs> than uh, only with the, uh, with the flesh, but, uh, and it helps to have the callus too, the little uh, nail behind. But when I play, I don't touch the, with the nail. I don't do that. Okay, and up. Okay. Hi. Ah, wow. <laughs> uh, hi, thanks for the talk. It was really enjoyable. Um, I was wondering, my, my question isn't really about technique, but um, just that uh, Sora obviously lived in lots of different cities. And I'm wondering, did you, have you discovered any changes in his compositional style over his lifetime that might relate to where he lived at various points? Ah, that is an interesting question. I don't, yes, I don't really uh, know as an experienced uh, thing. Uh, no, I don't, I can't answer to, to your question. <laughs> it's a really hard question. Yes, of course, uh, his way of uh, uh, composing is changed, but I don't know if it is related to the, some places. For example, when he went to Russia, okay, he composed the souvenir for the meeting with the uh, uh, Vysotsky, I think it was uh, this guitar, uh, Russian guitar player. So maybe uh, I don't know. Of course, it has some, uh, but no, I, I really, I really don't know. That's a good uh, topic to to go through. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyway. <laughs> maybe another thing that you know, for sure, he was using some material from uh, other countries. Huh? Yes, that's using right. Using folk songs so, or. Um, Yes. With the material. Okay, because now they, we have... Sorry. No, no, no. Because about the Russian team of the Souvenir de Russia, this is a team that, uh, okay, in this uh, tesis by, uh, by Jeffrey, uh, he says this is a team by Vysotsky. So this is a uh, really Russian team then used by SOR for this uh, team and variation, wonderful team and variation. So, yes. Okay, maybe now let's do, okay. Both you already did a question, so maybe let's talk for Skian. You can have your question, then Carlos. Uh, sorry, can I two? Okay, you can talk now. Thanks. Um, I was just wondering, is there any uh, specific repertoire you're working on at the moment by Soar, and are you planning to do any more, maybe future recordings of his music? Um, okay, yeah, at the moment, yes, I'm studying, uh, um, um, yes, for the most of time, uh, source music, but I'm not uh, uh, planning any recording. I'm studying, uh, um, I think, uh, what, uh, his um, best pieces, but for my point of view, because Opus 30, I think it's uh, one of the best uh, main pieces that uh, we have by Sor with Yes, variation, wonderful variation, and the last tarantella is uh, an amazing, uh, uh, an amazing piece. And yes, and is this this the question? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. No. So I'm studying yes a lot of sore and different uh, kind of sore because uh, what we we see in the Opus 30 is really different um, than uh, what we see in Opus 19. The float. Uh, the magic flute, uh, where he transcribed these uh, five or six, I don't remember, six uh, arias from the magic flute. And it's a really different uh, style and different way of writing. But we always, we always really see the sore inside, I think, uh, in all his composition, because it's always, um, you really can recognize him and uh, see how it's uh, well written and uh, nothing is uh, lost uh, in through the voices and uh, it's really something uh, um, yes yeah, so it's in this really different kind of compositions like yeah it is 
Okay, great. Thanks. No, thank you. Okay, thank next, you. next question, Carlos. That's me again. <laughs> um, no, uh, are you okay? Yeah, I, I just uh, wanted to, to ask about um, if you see any relationship be between um, the guitars where uh, surrounding Sor uh, and the most um, Panormo and, uh, and also Lacotte, yeah. Uh, when you uh, compare it, uh, for example, with, uh, with uh, Giuliani and uh, the Austrian makers like Stauffer, you see also a kind of difference in the in the yes. way of writing. And uh, obviously, there are two different composers, but maybe you see any uh, relationship with, for example, um, being more uh, focused on 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 the timbre or in the harmony in in sort because the the, um, the the construction of the yes instrument. because the, the, the lacot guitar is very very dramatic has a, a very deep sound and the, the stauffer is more like uh, operatic uh, thing with more focus on the melody not focus on the on the on the timbre yes know. okay i yes you're right thank you i think uh, in um, in general, uh, these guitars has in common that, uh, um, okay, there's a really clear, um, how to say, they really um, prefer, when you work on the bass strings, what I want to say is uh, uh, less power than what, what we expect now. So uh, what you say about Stauffer is really true, and uh, I think it's uh, quite common in also the other instruments. But, uh, um, about the, the traumatic sound and the, the uh, how to say the um, the deepness maybe the no? past uh, the um, yes the amalgamas uh, I don't know in English so so the the way the sounds get together uh, yes I think there's a, a connection in the way of writing panormo it's uh, a, anyway it's a really different uh, instrument uh, than uh, the the lacotte. Yes, and yes. Uh, you are totally um, right when you say that it's really dramatic, Lacotte, and uh, dramatic uh, is also Stauffer, but uh, in another in another way. So of course uh, the this kind of instrument, and uh, I I am playing on a, um, on a Stauffer and play soar on a Stauffer as a something really wonderful, but at the same time. Uh, you feel it and there are some passages and not uh, for the left hand, not for yeah. the left hand, some passages that you recognize that uh, it, it, this is a kind of guitar that is uh, thought for other things. Yeah, maybe as, it's like, like as, as you maybe noticed that this work is, was not written for this kind of guitar. It was really yes. weird, but, but when you play, for example, uh, Giuliani and, on a, a Lacotte guitar, is not the same uh, result as when you play Giuliani on a Stauffer. Yes, or on a Fabricatore, yes, or, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, you are totally right. I, I, I've seen that and uh, that's true. So the, the instrument really influenced the... the and uh, we have seen and you have seen that uh, really Sora had a really clear idea about uh, what he wanted in his method. He is a really critical of, uh, sometimes, but uh, he really says uh, what uh, uh, he think about the sound and how it should be, why to choose a, a, a Lakota guitar and non, not uh, yet, uh, not, not, not yet, and not uh, an Italian guitar because mm. uh, it was a good guitar, but for his music, uh, it's not, uh, that's not a right guitar. So that's true. And in the video, you were using a Lakota. Yes, in the video I was using Galacotte, yes. I mean, the, the other thing that is quite nice and is connected on the project that uh, Enrica mentioned before, that is Touch the Sound, that we try to make it accessible for students also to try those instruments. There are a lot of collectors that, are, that have a lot of instruments and we organize now, I don't know, more than uh, uh, 12 events where we help the student and performer to uh, have an experience with the original instrument and you know i suggest if you are interested in, in that try to to look how our events uh, you can find uh, on uh, yeah, our website also uh, i think that that's it so 
Thank you so much, Erika. It was very Thank helpful. you to you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank so you. I'll see you. See you next week with Ian Watt that will talk about Augustine Barrios. And then we have already planned other two lectures in May. One the 12th and the second one uh, the week after. And the first one with uh, Luis Mantovani, a Brazilian uh, guitarist and researcher that recently did a fantastic PhD on Rebe, a great composer that uh, is not so so well known, but he wrote a lot of pieces for uh, uh, solo guitar and um, and also chamber music with guitar. And we will have also Lorenzo Micheli the week after. Um, that we are still planning what uh, I asked him to talk about Castel Nuovo Tedesco, but uh, we will see. And so I hope you to see you also in the next event. So have a nice week. See you soon. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. For my student, you can stay here. That you know, we we, we can discuss more. I can also. Let me give you a second that I want to create. Okay. I can't lose. I think that now I do something with the only with my student. Carlos. Okay. Okay, you have other questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one question. Um, is the connection okay? Sometimes. <laughs> Okay. I'll when just, I'll when, you, when you ask when you ask the question is when you say that you want to ask a question is perfect. When you make a <laughs> question, <laughs> I'll just I'll type the question. Okay, maybe Jamie, you can read it. <laughs> we want to check your connection. <laughs> That's a, a terrible idea. My internet is always bad. Jimmy Index. Not <laughs> you have the distortion uh, in the microphone. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alan, Alan, you can you can you can make questions if you want. <laughs>